Greetings folks and welcome to the very first edition of the Electromaker Show. My name is Ian Buckley and I'll be giving you your midweek roundup of everything new and interesting that's happening with Maker and embedded kind of hardware things that we all love. So this week we'll be looking at the new Raspberry Pi 8GB version along with the announcement of the second Crow Pi and a load of other stuff as well as our very first giveaway of things from the box of mystery. More on that later. But for now we have credits, let's roll them. Just before we get into it, uh, this series is starting under rather strange circumstances. We're in the process of just coming out of lockdown. I don't know how things are where you are. Uh, so before we even get started, I just want to say I do hope you're safe. I do hope you're well. And uh, yeah, this show is very new. I'm still feeling it out. As you can hear, the audio treatment isn't exactly perfect. And it seems like my neighbours are celebrating coming out of lockdown by breaking out every chainsaw and sledgehammer they have. So um, yeah, I just wanted to put that out there in case you hear any strange sounds in the background. But for now, let's get into it. So the Raspberry Pi 4 now has an 8GB variant and uh, that's awesome. It's $75, which is in my mind kind of cheap. I know other people have opinions about that and we can get onto that later. But yeah, this is another update in what has been a consistently well updated line of single board computers. I do like the fact that they actually pointed out that they uh, kind of leaked that this was happening on the compliance leaflet from the Raspberry Pi 4. I tried to find mine to see um, if mine had that on it and I, I can't because I lose everything. Um, but uh, possibly kind of more interesting even than the eight gigabyte version of the Pi is the fact that they are now kind of officially branding the Raspbian OS and there is a 64 gigabyte version which is now in beta. And also, as we reported recently on the Electromaker website, there is now also a, an official way to boot from your USB drive. So yeah, Raspberry Pi 4, eight gigabytes of RAM, booting from USB, this is getting closer and closer to being a fantastic server. Uh, or you could just have more than two uh, browser tabs open as well, if you really want. There were a number of small changes as well. Um, on the board itself, the power regulator has been moved. I think it might actually be a new power regulator as well. Um, as far as everyone seems to be talking about, it's very, very unlikely. It means it's not gonna fit any cases that you already have for the Pi. I mean, I guess it's possible if you have like a super streamlined Pi case that only just covers over the top of the chips or, or whatever, whatever you're into, you know. So as I mentioned, some people are grumbling about the $75 price tag for the Raspberry Pi 8 gigabyte variant. And other people are saying that there's no point getting it anyway because you'd never use eight gigabytes of RAM. As to the truth of either of these statements, I... I don't know, $75 for this much single board computer is a pretty good deal. Mine is on order and when it arrives, I'm sure we'll be covering more to do with the Raspberry Pi 4 and Raspbian OS and all the fun little knickety things we can do with it. Yes. So next up today, we are talking about the Crow Pi 2. Now, if you weren't familiar with the original Crow Pi, it is an all-in-one Raspberry Pi system in a clamshell with a screen and a bunch of sensors. In fact, I have one here. I reviewed the Crow Pi when it came out some time ago, and um, I'll be honest, this kind of thing, all-in-one uh, Raspberry Pi kit or Arduino kit that's meant to be a solution that just works, I'm usually pretty skeptical because realistically, they're just normal starter kits with a gimmick. This I was really impressed with because it's a decent clamshell in that I actually find that to be a pretty decent quality thing. I'd trust it to protect it with a Raspberry Pi with a screen already attached to it, a bunch of sensors that you use already, a servo and stepper motor drivers built into the board. And yes, okay, some of the companion materials that came with it were maybe a little bit janky, but I used this thing more than just my general Raspberry Pi for a while when I was just messing around with stuff, especially since it came with a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard and a pair of SNES controllers. So yeah, this was my retro gaming or fiddling around with Pi thing for a while. And now they're back with the Crow Pi 2. It looks like the Crow Pi 2 is taking everything that the original Crow Pi did and kind of trying to step it up a little bit. Now there's the very obvious hardware stuff and I can't help but be a little bit giddy about the idea about having this keyboard on top of the sensors underneath. Now, um, expecting this to have the quality of a normal laptop keyboard is probably a little bit too much to ask, I'm guessing. I mean, it's, it's meant to sit on, on, top of, on top of the thing and the Raspberry Pi goes into the thing, but yeah, it looks kind of cool and all of the same sensors, I think, from the first Crow Pi in there. 
yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sold on the look of this thing at least. It's going to be quite a cute little thing. And again, this is aimed mostly for kids and learning. And I think that this is a very cool idea that they come up with here. Um, obviously, these are just early shots. I have no idea if the build quality is going to be good, if it's going to be like this or whatever. But here's the thing that I find super cool about this, so far at least. In terms of software, they have software specifically designed for Crow Pi 2 users, mm. which integrates Scratch, Python programming, and adaptation tutorials. I'm not really sure what the third one is, but yeah, Scratch and Python, Raspberry Pi. Hmm. Microbit and Arduino compilation environment. Ooh. And Minecraft, because Minecraft. Anyway, looking at the CrowPy 2 images and this document that they've sent through, uh, and of course there's a, a very detailed parts list that they have sent out to as well, um, this looks like it's going to be everything that the first CrowPy was, uh, and probably a little bit more. The first one was a very solid item, and Elecro are getting a real reputation for actually just saying they're going to do something and doing it pretty well. Uh, hi, this is Future Ian. Um, I got a message from Elecro while I was editing with uh, some GIFs of the Crow Pi 2 in action. And uh, they do really seem to be trying to do everything. Uh, the, it's moving robots around, it's doing kind of pianos with fruit like a, a makey makey. Um, there's the this RFID uh, little cardboard blocks that spawn buildings into Minecraft, which is so cool. If I was a, a child, that would be the coolest thing I'd ever see. Um, they really are trying their best to do everything in one package, which sometimes is a bit of a warning sign, but to be honest, they did it last time, so I'm kind of excited to see what happens. But yeah, since this came in so late, I thought I'd add it just so you can see uh, the thing that I saw. Yes. Okay, moving on to a section called, we have a mystery box of things, and would you like to win things from the mystery box of things? Yeah, this, this name also needs work. Um, we have a mystery box of hardware and uh, different peripherals that can attach to hardware from various companies and we want to give them away as prizes as part of this show. If you want to take part in this competition to win a random piece of hardware that might be entirely useless to you, leave a comment in this video saying, I would like to win what is in the mystery box, please. Um, and if you're a subscriber to this channel, we'll be picking a winner and uh, we'll be announcing it in next week's show. And just before we move on, I'm going to take one item out of the mystery box and to see what is in the mystery box. Mystery. Yes. Excellent. I'm going to put my hand in somewhere and I have no idea what I'm getting. What is this? Oh, that looks cool. I have no idea what it is, but that looks cool. Okay, having just taken a quick break to look this thing up, this thing is really cool. It's an Arduino compatible ARM Cortex, very low power, little hardware development board. And like I say, this is a completely random thing to give away as a prize on a YouTube channel, and that's kind of the point. So if you would like to win this, all you need to do is be a subscriber to the Electromaker YouTube channel and leave a comment below saying, I would like to win what is in the mystery box. And uh, yeah, something like this will be drawn out of the box next week and sent out to you. But uh, yes, anyone that enters, beware that the next thing that I pull out of that box might be absolutely useless. Anyway, on with the show. So moving on to a brand new section called Cool Stuff Ian Saw on the Internet over the last week or so. Title may need work. So we're going to take a quick look at the Bigfoot Wi-Fi relay board from Bigfoot Electronics. It is currently on Kickstarter but has met its goal. They asked for 898 euros or whatever magical dollar, pound or local currency amount that is for you, which is a very small amount to get something off the ground. Um, and it is essentially an Arduino powered board with Wi-Fi and relays um, and an SD card reader. It comes in two variants, the Wi-Fi version and a Bluetooth version. Um, now, this isn't going to do anything that half the stuff in your Arduino starter kit doesn't do, but look at it. Look, this watertight container, and it's all completely fitted together, and I really love the scope of this project. It just fits, and it works, and if you need it, it is perfect for you. Now, they do mention that one of the things you can do with this board is have some kind of slightly higher powered things working um, from an industrially watertight enclosure, and a few of you might have already sort of made that click in your mind that okay having relays is one thing but what if you want to actually control motors in an underwater setting i mean i don't know about you but the first thing i thought of when i thought of watertight enclosure with an arduino in it is i'm going to build a submarine now by the way i'm very aware that that word is submarine but i've said submarine since i could speak and habits 
Happily, the next item on our list is a tiny motor driver, which is launching soon on Crowd Supply. So you can sort of see how I feel like those two things might fit together nicely. Uh, if you've used H bridges before, if you use DC motors, you'll be familiar with what this kind of board does. It gives you the control you need in order to not only uh, set the direction of a motor, but its speed. Um, I'm not gonna give you a tutorial in this section here, but maybe we can do that one day. The thing I like about this is it's absolutely tiny. Um, I, Again, I like the fact that they put this next to a quarter, but I've never been to America, so I don't actually know what that means, but hopefully there'll be some millimeters down here somewhere. Yes, 15 millimeters by 20 millimeters. That is very, very small indeed. Um, this hasn't gone live yet. Uh, it will be launched soon, and I will be putting a link in the description uh, of this video so you can follow it if you want and support it when it does go live. Um, Again, I like the scope of these little projects. It's a tiny little H-bridge motor driver. It's exactly what you need if you need it. I'm probably gonna get one, even though I don't need it because I have a problem and I must own everything. Just before moving on, um, some of you might have noticed that no matter how small this H-bridge is, it doesn't have a heatsink. Uh, and of course you would have to attach one if you were doing anything uh, up to its maximum of 12 amps. However, on the Crowd Supply website, the makers have said for many usage scenarios, up to five amps, a heatsink can be avoided or significantly reduced. So it's just worth thinking about what you're gonna be using this thing for before you back it. Um, but even with a heatsink, this thing is still absolutely tiny. So yeah, kind of cool, huh? And just before we end today, I wanted to cover some of the things that you can be doing at home if you are having to stay at home a little more than usual currently. Um, there are a number of events that have been happening online and some of them are kind of more like general hangouts, some of them are sort of like symposiums. Uh, we reported recently on the Virtually Maker Fair, which has now taken place. However, all of the projects from the Virtually Maker Fair are now available to look at on the Make Project website. I'll be putting a link in the description to that. Uh, there is an absolutely wonderful array of stuff from people of all different levels. Whether some people I think maybe were doing things for the very first time, and there are some people who are clearly actually very skilled in what they were doing, but were just taking part in the online version of the Maker Fair in order to try and get some kind of cohesive feeling of community in these very strange times. Um, the same can be said for uh, the Typewriter Stories with Dr. Sparks series that is running on the Make YouTube channel. Um, this is lovely. Uh, this is especially if you have children. If you've never heard of Dr. Sparks before or the Typewriter Stories, um, he's a very special guy and what he does is wonderful. Uh, check him out. So Typewriter Stories with Dr. Sparks is happening every Monday on the Make YouTube channel. Um, and uh, there's a variety of other things also from the Virtually Make Affair that happened recently on the Make YouTube channel, some of which are incredibly inspiring given our current times, uh, certainly something that is worth checking out. And the H to the 4N uh, digital hardware happy hour is something that I would love to go to. Um, uh, you can probably see from the uh, invite here that in my local time zone, it's a little bit difficult. But if you are someone who is living in the States or somewhere where this fits, um, this should be a very nice online meeting space for people who are hardware enthusiasts and hackers to talk about what you are building and to maybe learn something new. And I don't think there's any le level of uh, entry requirements. You don't have to be a pro to do this. It's just a nice thing to get involved with. We recently featured the Bella Mini on MakerBoard Mondays, which is on the Electromaker website. And um, as I said in the article, it's difficult for me to not sound like super enthusiastic about this because I'm a musician and it's hardware and it's programming to make sounds and I love doing that. Um, but as if that wasn't enough, the Bella team have put out a free C++ real-time audio programming course. It is on their YouTube channel. And um, it's Dr. Andrew McPherson who teaches digital uh, signal processing and making music with hardware and microcontrollers at St. Mary's University in London. There are about eight uh, lectures in. I think uh, the most recent one is on filters. Uh, if you want to get into this, you will need to get a Bella or a Bella Mini, but um, I absolutely recommend this course. This is a fantastic way of getting started and a fantastic project if you have a little bit more time on your hands than usual. That is it for the Electromaker Show first episode. Um, tell us what you liked about the show and especially tell us what you didn't like. Uh, I'm still feeling out how this is going to work and I'll be making it better over the weeks to come. If you want to enter the mystery box competition, head to the comment section down below and just type in, I would like to win what is in the mystery box. And uh, we'll be picking a winner from our list of subscribers to the channel next week. But for now, take care of yourselves, stay creative, and I'll see you in a week.